Welcome, my name is Mateusz Strang. I'm tech lead at Virtuos Lab, mostly working on implementation of headless CMS Trapi for leading global retailer. Let me share a screen with you. Give me a moment. Okay, I hope you uh, see my screen. Uh, Okay, so today I will talk about how headless CMS can work with many applications, a high level view of CMS, the consumers, and how it works together inside the Kubernetes cluster. There are many reasons why we have decided to build a headless CMS, but going back to the past, I was uh, the happiest person when I was developing stateless applications. Not being aware about the state makes life easier. Less potential bugs, faster development, easier testing. So when the need of persistence was born, the way to go was the headless CMS. We had third party traditional CMS that we could use, but it doesn't fulfill our requirements. And it wasn't flexible enough to create new content types. That was the main factor which pushed us to use another solution. Any other reasons to use new CMS? Yes. In history of our company, we've been in similar situation many times. So what are the most often reasons to do that? First of all, current CMS is hard to maintain, but also it doesn't have enough availability. Security reasons, because most popular CMS are also the first target of cyber attacks. Low scalability or no scalability at all, at all. Many customizations, which make version upgrades almost impossible. Poor quality of delivered plugins, extensions. Many different teams work without specific guidelines or even project management, which resulted in different approaches code duplications, or sometimes different languages, frameworks used within one CMS. Another reason why we decided to create, use new CMS is of course, lack of documentation or poor quality. Nowadays, headless CMS are the answer for rapidly evolving edge technologies, thanks to their focus on the data structures delivery, rather, then combining data with a view. Often developers decide to use headless instead of typical CMS. On the other hand, business are keen on choosing traditional CMS because they are more, more familiar with it and they are used to it, but we need to convince them to use the headless one. Okay, so why we have choose Trapi? We took many factors under consideration, the most obvious one was that our team worked in TypeScript ecosystem. So it was much easier to use Trapi rather than learning new languages, but it's not an only one reason. Strapi has powerful and open source engine. It's faster content delivery. Strapi is configurable, extendable. It has built-in security. And also important for us, for developers, that it is really developer friendly. When we talk about omnichannels, we need to be aware of their different requirements. One application could use only configuration for the app in New North Europe. Another one could consume pages and navigation and other collection types for, for example, native app developed by completely different team in even in different technologies. So our CMS need to be ready for internationalization, for supporting complex queries, for searching proper data. It's hard to predict in that case, uh, the potential traffics, traffic and peaks. Um, there is a risk of data leaks between tenants so let's summarize our multi-tenancy requirements. The most important ones are internationalization, searching capability, secure, and I'm not talking about all WASP vulnerabilities. 
but cross-tenant isolation so that one consumer won't get data from the other. Like above searching, shouldn't allow finding records from another one uh, from other tenant. Visual agnostic, also very important topic. I know that business would like to have immediately feedback. Each change should be visible. But when we support multiple channels, we are not aware about how the data will be presented at, on final application. We need a preview capability, and this feature is not bidding in most of available CMS. Scalable, also very important point. There are two dimensions of scalability. Uh, one is that new consumer should be ported. And we don't want to modify infrastructure with adding more resources or any changes in architect architecture. Another aspect is scalability in context of unpredictable traffic. Some applications could have traffic peaks in daily hours, and other ones at morning. So we need to be prepared for rapidly changing uh, traffic. High availability. I think this is self-explanatory. Everyone would like to have a high available application. The same here. Only one difference is that if CMS with multiple consumers will crash, it would affect all consumers. So it is very critical application. Easy and fast process supporting new consumers. This is just for us, for developers. I personally would like to work on new features um, or improvements rather than spending time to board new applications with which require a long, complicated process. Okay, so going back to typical CMS solution, we usually start with single instance of CMS, which provide data for single consumer. For that scenario, it's popular to use typical CMS with visual layer inside it. However, it won't be ready to scale and born new application. Similar case here, in theory, there could be multiple consumers, but it will be their responsibility to query proper data using, for example, filters. In this approach, traditional CMS doesn't fit well, so we should use headless CMS here. A little bit more complicated data, data separation. We could create separate databases, or at least separate collection types with some prefixes which suggest tenant membership. Okay, cross tenant isolation, something we have chosen, we've implemented. Thanks to Strapi extensible nature, it was possible to introduce the new extra concept, the solution implemented for global retailers, which expect to coexist multiple distribution channels within a single strategic implementation. The virtual tenant context allows minimizing the number of duplicated logic components by sharing them between the channels, as well as minimizing costs, thanks to the fact that everything won't work on the same scalable infrastructure and don't need to be client dedicated. The virtual tenancy is a some special layer that identifies from who the query comes from and limits its access only to allowed resources. It is impossible to fetch and manage content and data restricted to the different tenants. I've mentioned that multi-tenancy should be visual agnostic and this is how inside Virtus Lab we create an open source library called Strapi Plugin Preview, uh, which will allow you to visit consumer application with a final look and feel. In admin panel of CMS, you have a preview button, and when you click on it, it will redirect you to configured URL, URL of consumer application. Consumer responsibility is to fetch data from our API and render the page so that user can see how the data will look like in the final application. It was required because CMS itself doesn't have option 
to render data structures differently. And to be honest, you shouldn't be able to do that because it's a consumer responsibility. Scalability, high availability is granted by Kubernetes, which they run on. Kubernetes auto scaling enables to transparently respond to rapidly changing resource, resource requirements. Just when CPU will be higher, higher than 50% in this case, we will scale up and schedule new pods. If the CPU again will decrease, for example, to 10%, we will scale down to default replicas count. Big benefit of Strapi is that all collection types are represented by a JSON schema. So we cannot add new collection types without changing our repository. We have something called infrastructure as a code, but in this case, it's more CMS as a code, which is really desired. So our repo will be always up to date. This will allow us to integrate, easily integrate with continuous integration and continuous deployment. Just after pull request will be merged, we can go with deployment. When we talk about front-end applications, uh, it's worth mentioning that we decided to use Express and Node.js framework so that React applications connect only to API gateway which is responsible for all authentication and gathering data, including fetching data from CMS. This approach gives flexibility to other teams to build front-end apps to consume only data they are interested in, but also it gives a lot of security benefits. Reusability. There are shared components which could be used such as API connectors, including, including core functionalities like search, navigation, preview, but also any other collection types. At the end, consumer need to pass on the tenant identifier and access token to have a valid response. CMS renderer, including rich text editor, this is a little bit harder due to different set of components per tenant. However, skeleton of renderer could be reusable, which will be extended by each of tenants with custom components based on their own design guidelines. Basic page template is generic. However, there could be any other template for a specific tenant. This approach allow clients to use few different layouts. For example, they could have different templates for articles. Okay, in a topic description, I said that I will show you how to build an enterprise application using Strapi, Node.js and React inside a Kubernetes cluster. I also mentioned that I'm a fan, a big fan of TypeScript. So the last point to cover is Kubernetes deployment using TypeScript. Yes, and it's of course achievable by a library called Pulumi, which I had pleasure to work with. Pulumi itself is a library which allows you to build whole infrastructure, including Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but I will show you a few snippets of code for building Docker image and deploying application to Kubernetes. Uh, important note that Pulumi is not connected to only one cloud provider. It's, uh, it could be reused for any cloud providers. I guess all of you can use it in, in your projects. Uh, and, and I really recommend to, to play with it. Okay, first we'd like to build and push Docker image to container registry. Just a few lines of code, do all the stuff. Importing in modules, configuring image name based on a registry URL. And finally, trigger build and pushing image to the to the registry with method called image. Of course, this is a simple example. Uh, for most cases, we would like to have different context or additional tags, but 
it's also achievable here. So we have already image pushed to registry. So now we can create a Kubernetes deployment. Typically, we used YAML files with manifests and applying it using kubectl or Helm hand file. But here we can do everything using plain objects. If you noticed, one line here has an error. And this is why I love to use it. I love it. We, we have all TypeScript benefits here with auto completion as well. This, this, they suggest to you what properties you can use, or if you use uh, bad properties, it will throw an error. It will show you the immediately feedback. So no more errors caused by typos in YAML and uh, no more debugging in Jenkins, at least in context of, Kubes, uh, of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, manifest. The last one is service. We need it to be able to reach application. So as you can see, it's a very nice library. You can specify everything, all kind of manifests, even if you have some custom one. You can pass a string instead of objects, uh, string in the YAML notation. So I really re recommend to get familiar with that fam uh, with that library. Uh, final slide, the last one, it's just a basic architecture graph showing you headless CMS place, which is in Kubernetes cluster, together with consumers that will give another security benefits because CMS API won't be available to an internet and traffic will go through Kubernetes networking. Fully qualified domain name will be enough to establish connection between consumer and API and this will also decrease latency. So that's the end. Thank you very much for your time. If you have uh, any questions, uh, you can catch me on Twitter. And do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>